So we know that blood pressure is related to cardiovascular risk, uh, intimately related, and there is no threshold for that relationship. We know that high blood pressure is extremely common, both in the US and around the world. We know that lowering blood pressure lowers risk. A big question that we really didn't know is just how low to go. So that was sort of the fundamental question in sprint, how low to go. And what we did is randomize to either the standard level of blood pressure reduction, uh, average of 140 or less, and a more intensive arm, less than 120 millimeters of mercury. And we were very effective in getting a difference in blood pressure, about 15 millimeters of mercury uh, at year one, and that remained pretty constant throughout. We expected to go for four to six years, and lo and behold, after about three years, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute made the decision to stop the blood pressure intervention because <clears throat> by that stage, the results were already rather dramatic. A 25% reduction in cardiovascular events, big reduction in um, heart failure, uh, and this was not run-of-the-mill heart failure, this is really decompensated heart failure requiring admissions almost always, big reduction in cardiovascular mortality. So 25% reduction in those cardiovascular outcomes, uh, and that was coupled with a 27% reduction in all-cause mortality. So very powerful, positive findings, and that's what triggered the early stopping of the trial. And there were, of course, some adverse events, as there always are, and we are trying to understand those fully. Uh, some signals from the kidney whether it's just a short-term response to physiologic changes in blood pressure or something more serious, we don't know, but it's not a huge number of events and uh, we don't really know the long-term implications. So we're probing that. But in the interim, I think in this group, which is over 50, high blood pressure, and an additional risk for cardiovascular disease, we got very clear evidence of benefit of going to a lower blood pressure than is currently being recommended. Well, I think in the type of individuals we were studying, there's pretty good evidence that the benefits are much better, much larger than the potential for adverse events. So that's that older, high-risk hypertensive. Now when you get further away from that, let's say you're dealing with somebody who is much lower risk, that's I think where you'd start to be more concerned. Uh, does your risk benefit change? So it is tricky and, and that of course is what comes into the practice of medicine. Taking the best information, trying to understand how that relates to the patient and then having a discussion with the patient and trying to come up with a sensible decision as to what to do. But in general, for the types of patients we studied, I would guess many physicians would immediately say they would like to shoot for lower pressures. Guidelines committees, and I chair the uh, 2016 ACCAHA Guidelines Committee for Blood Pressure, they'll be trying to understand this. We actually met last night. I didn't chair that session since I'm involved with SPRINT, but we'll be looking carefully to try to help practitioners understand what SPRINT does and, and how the guidelines should be changed, if any, in terms of the extent of blood pressure lowering that is desirable. Well, I think the take home here is in this high risk group, the treatment um, outcomes that we saw are very much in keeping with epidemiology. The body doesn't understand hypertension. It's something we use as a pragmatic definition to make decisions, but the body only sees blood pressure. And for the body, the higher the pressure, the higher the risk. And what SPRINT tended to show in that high risk setting is the lower the pressure, or at least lower than we're currently doing, the better in terms of reducing risk and very powerful reduction in risk. Well, there are always caveats. Uh, a big one is that we measured blood pressure very carefully. 
it, it, we did it exactly as it is recommended to do. Uh, many great practitioners do that, but in practice, many people are busy. So, you know, I would say caveat is the decision making here was based on blood pressures that were on somebody who comes in sitting quietly for five minutes, having the right size cuff, getting several blood pressures and averaging them, and then making decisions. We also recommended, practitioners didn't always follow this, but generally they did, we recommended preferred agents. So when it came to diuretics, chlorthalidone was preferred over thiazide. Uh, we recommended getting to full doses before adding in another agent. We actually had what we call milestone visits where we required physicians to make decisions to add new agents. Now to get as low as we got, actually the difference in the number of medications was surprisingly small to me. It was only one medication difference between the standard treatment arm and the intensive treatment arm. But that's with preferred drugs at full doses. So that's a caveat uh, that I would say. The other caveat, of course, is we don't know with the signals we saw for adverse events what they mean. Uh, we'll have to find out over the long term. They probably don't outweigh the benefits, but you know we always have to be careful. The third caveat is every patient is different. Uh, and that's why we have healthcare providers helping them to make those decisions. And the last caveat is a little related to the third one, and that is we have studied a particular group of patients. They are a little older, they are high risk, they do have high blood pressure, and so when you generalize the results, the closer a patient is to the type of people we studied, the easier it is to generalize. The further you get away, the harder it is. Um, I should say just uh, finally that we went to a lot of trouble to have a diversity of patient population so we could probe that question in different groups. And we had about 30% of our participants over the age of 75. That's the group where you, if you're going to see a problem with lowering blood pressure intensively, you might expect it there. They did just as well as the younger people. We had a cohort about 30% with chronic kidney disease. Again, you know, that's where you'd want to be careful and they did just as well in terms of the benefits as anybody else. Men and women did the same. African Americans did as good as non-African Americans. Um, different levels of entry blood pressure didn't seem to make a difference. So it was a very robust finding within our trial. It was very homogeneous across a lot of different uh, subgroups. So that was impressive. But, um, you know, I. I think we have an impression of it now. I'm sure other people will be commenting on it. And for the practice community, over time, things distill. And we'll have uh, guidelines by 2016. So in the interim, I think people are going to make smart and wise decisions. And I hope that the sprint trial will be helpful in clinical practice.